Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Diet really isn't the key factor that determines the integrity of our digestion. And diet really isn't the thing that we should be prioritizing if we do want long-term symptomatic alleviation from our digestive-related issues. Have you ever seen that iceberg analogy where what lies at the very top is a very small factor that's visible to us all, but it has such little significance compared to what's hidden away deep beneath the surface? And whenever I hear diet being mentioned, I always envisage it at the very top of the iceberg because it's always something that's in the public domain and everybody always has their opinions of it. But actually, in the whole grand scheme of things, it's something that holds very little significance in the overall function of our digestion. Remember that those with the best digestion tend to eat whatever they want, whereas those with the worst digestion tend to restrict what they eat on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think it's very crucial to take this point on board when it comes to improving gut function, because ultimately what we want to achieve is we want our machine to be able to become more resilient to a wider variety of foods, not severely limit our food choices to become more accommodating to our dysfunction. Which then of course brings me on to what I believe makes up the overwhelmingly large proportion of the iceberg that's hidden deep beneath the surface. And what that is, is fine tuning the neural pathways that are responsible for delivering sensory information into our brain. Right, so you're probably thinking to yourself right now, what the hell is he on about? Well, our digestive system is just one of many metaphorical cogs that's function is being continuously impacted by signals that are being sent down by the brain. And these signals can ultimately end up influencing variables like blood flow, immune function, and peristaltic activity within the gut. This happens both consciously and unconsciously, and it's really important to take that point on board, because I think many of us are familiar with our digestion becoming upset, perhaps when we're stressed, angry, or we're anxious or excited prior to a certain event. But what about the times when we don't feel any of these things, and yet our digestion still feels terrible? To account for these times, we need to consider the possibility that our brain is continuously taking on board inaccurate sensory information regarding our environment at an unconscious level. And in turn, this mismatched information then causes the brain to struggle to actually effectively control and coordinate the movements and activity of the digestive system. And this is an issue that has nothing to do with our mentality and everything to do with our inbuilt hard wiring. Because the fact of the matter is, is that we have numerous receptors that are each responsible for detecting certain aspects of our surrounding environment and then relaying that information to the brain. And if dysfunctions were to occur to any of these sensory receptors or to the neuronal pathways that are responsible for delivering their information into the brain, then you can almost guarantee that the knock-on impact of this would end up being chronic symptoms. Because when the brain can't make sense of its surroundings, it really struggles to gain a hold of and actually get the rest of the organs in our body to behave in a desirable fashion. And if the brain is struggling to make sense of ongoing variables like gravity, positional changes, or visual stimuli, then you can bet that the momentary function of our organs, including our digestive system, is really going to be hit hard. But if what I'm talking about is confusing you and you did want total clarity on how this all works so that you can regain your life back, then I 100% recommend checking out the Unbeatable Blueprint online course. Here I break down what is a very complex topic into such an easily digestible format so that you can easily follow along and adopt the exact same principles that I used to significantly improve my own digestive symptoms. But just to clear things up with why I believe the role that diets play is hugely inferior to fine-tuning the function of these sensory pathways, I think what might be really helpful is if I discuss what was going on with my own situation. So every day for over seven years, I was experiencing extremely restrictive digestive symptoms, which included the likes of 
disjointed gut motility, trapped gas, intestinal spasming and cramping, and alternating diarrhea and constipation. And along with this, I always had heightened immune markers within my gut. And over this time, as you can imagine, I experimented with numerous diets. And whilst certain foods would offer me some degree of symptomatic alleviation, what I ended up finding out was that the results would never last. And what would happen on every single occasion is that my body would just simply revert back to behaving the way it was before. Just have a look back at some of the old videos on my YouTube channel. You can probably tell by the way that I talk and by the way that I look that my health was nowhere near at the levels that I had hoped for, despite me having full faith in the diets that I was following at that moment in time. So after years of failed attempts, it got to the point where I realised that I needed some more information to find out how my body was functioning and why it appeared to be functioning in such a dysfunctional manner on such a continuous basis. So that then led me in search of an extensive neurological examination. And wow, I can't even begin to tell you some of the crazy things that were uncovered during this examination. Stick with me as I go through this series of events, as it will all become very evident as to why I was experiencing such an array of debilitating digestive symptoms that I never would have been able to resolve with diet alone. So we've got this very small sensory receptor within our inner ear called our vestibular system. And what this system primarily is for is to sense changes in head position relative to the force of gravity. And with this information, it signals to the brain to tell the brain when we change position so that the brain can instantaneously send blood to wherever it needs to go within the body so that we can efficiently adapt to any positional change. So the sensory information regarding gravity and positional changes is sensed by the vestibular system. This information is then relayed to the brain and then in turn, the brain then gets blood to be shunted to where it needs to be in the body through mediating our blood pressure. So one of the big problems that was discovered in my case was that I had a hypotonic or a low functioning vestibular system, meaning that blood was struggling to be transported to where it needed to be in the body, which included up to my head, which meant that my brain was being fueled with consistently lower than ideal amounts of blood, especially whenever I was in a standing position. And because of this, my brain then signaled to my heart to get it to beat faster, to artificially raise my blood pressure levels in order to pump more blood up to my head. And this is the first really important point to note, because this increase in sympathetic activity actually steals blood from the gut to allow the brain to perform what is a far more important physiological task to our overall survival and well-being. So lack of blood flow to the gut was the first problem. Secondly, because my brain was receiving continuously less than ideal amounts of blood, certain receptors within my brain that are responsible for detecting levels of carbon dioxide within the blood were sensing lower than ideal amounts of carbon dioxide. This is a problem because when we have high levels of carbon dioxide in the blood, the body recognises that we need to expel that. And the way it does this is by vasodilation, so opening up of the blood vessels. However, when the body senses that there's not enough levels of carbon dioxide in the blood, then what happens is the opposite occurs. And in order to retain the carbon dioxide, it vasoconstricts the blood vessels. So because I was hypocapnic, meaning that my brain was sensing lower than ideal amounts of carbon dioxide in my blood, it meant that I was experiencing excessive constriction of my blood vessels. And this included the blood vessels that surround the gut and are responsible for peristaltic action of gut motility. And this was a huge factor behind why I was experiencing immense amounts of cramping and spasming within my digestive system, which meant that I ended up in a situation where I had reduced amounts of blood flow to my gut and excessive constriction of the blood vessels within my gut, 
And of course, these two things combined is an absolute recipe for disaster when it comes to gut motility and the ability of my digestive tract to actually break down and digest foods. So a whole cascade of events unfolded which heavily compromised the function of my digestion and the reason why this all came about in the first place was because a particular sensory receptor wasn't carrying out the job that it was originally designed to do in an efficient manner. So once I got to work training this particular receptor through functional neurologic rehabilitation and specifically targeted neurological exercises, I was able to observe a significant improvement with the all-round function of my digestion and it offered me the license to experiment with a much wider variety of foods. The main reason why I bring this up is because do you honestly believe that a change in diet, whether that's vegan, carnivore, paleo, etc., would have been sufficient enough to actually address and resolve this issue? Of course it wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have even scratched the surface. Which is why if you are somebody who's experiencing debilitating and chronic digestive symptoms, I strongly recommend looking into this as a potential possibility and key culprit behind why you experience the symptoms that you do. Now, could the origin of your potential dysfunction be different to mine? Quite possibly. And that's why I suggest having the function of your brain and nervous system thoroughly assessed to be able to identify any of these potential dysfunctional pathways so that you can then train them back up to how they were originally designed to function. And in my case, this was achieved with the help of a trained chiropractic neurologist.